Hey everybody, Paul from Better Chess here, and today we're going to look at a rapid chess game played on Lee Chess between myself and a player named Funarog. So let's take a look and see what happened. I am white, and let's begin by playing through some moves. So e4, c5, this is the typical d3 uh, setup that I like on the King's Indian attack, and he plays d5. So I just, you know, again, no reason to take, I can take, but I wanted to keep developing pieces. Leave the tension in the center and continue to develop. So he plays push. Um, okay, so d4 is a bit of a weakening move, and I'll tell you why. First, it kind of gives me this c4 square at some point to jump into, which is nice. And as you can see already, his dark squared bishop is going to have some problems biting down on these dark squares. So already uh, some inaccuracy here, just to be uh, clear on that. Okay, so he plays d4. Then I play knight gf3, just typical developing moves. He plays knight c6. Uh, not a bad idea. Uh, there are other alternatives. He could be difficult, like in play, uh, you know, bg4 and give a little more pressure on the knight on the diagonal, but he doesn't. So now I'm faced with a situation where I want to grab the center. And how should I do that? And I do it by playing e5. Now, why is that strong? Well, keep in mind, by playing e5, I control now d6. I control f6. I have, at some point, the ability to play bishop g2. And I have this nice long diagonal available to me as well. If I didn't play that, let's say I played some passive move, I played g3, well, then he plays e5. And now he has he's really has a nice little fortress here, and my, my diagonal has no future. Where do I go? Right? It's cut off. So e5 is a strong move. Now he plays a really odd move. He plays uh, e6, which hems in his light square bishop, obviously, which is a bit of an issue. And, you know, better a better fight would have been something like uh, maybe even queen d5, putting pressure on this pawn here in the middle. Uh, I'd have to play like queen e2. And, and, and anyway, it's a bit more of a fight where I'd have to defend and, and uh, things get a little more interesting. But anyway, e6 is the move. I play g3. And now he's starting to come up on the on this pawn. This pawn on d4 is a real problem. So he plays queen c7, and I play queen e2. It's, it's not a problem to block this bishop's diagonal because he's not going to be on this, this diagonal. He's going to go to g2. So I'm just looking to defend the pawn. And he instantly plays knight g e7. And I know what his plan is. He wants to play knight g6, right, here. And that way he'll hit the pawn once, twice, three times. That's the idea. So I looked at this and I realized, okay, so the only way to really defend this, practically the only way, is to play a move like knight c4, right? That I'd have to have to figure out. And I looked at this, but I'm like, okay, a lot of calculation. This is a rapid chess game, so I have some time. It's five minutes per move with eight seconds of increment. So I took about maybe 20 seconds, and I realized that I have to be able to play knight c4, but how do I defend that? So I play a4. So the reason why is if I play knight c4, he kicked me with b5, right? So now he can't do that, hence a4. All right, so he plays, as expected, knight g6, and then I pop it into c4. So I have a really good position already here. I got knights in the center of the board. I have the long diagonal, which is going to be revealed shortly here. Uh, he has, again, I mentioned problems. His bishops are really biting on his own pawn structure, and he has to liberate them. And his rooks, you know, he hasn't decided which way he's going to castle. So a little bit of a challenge. Okay, so then he starts now bishop e7. I play h4 here. Now, why didn't I just play bishop g2? I could play bishop g2. Right, just develop. But I figured, look, this this looks very juicy here. This H4, H5 idea, and I have a nice, you know, potentially an open rook file at some point if I can force things open here, and I like that idea. So 
let's see what happens. He plays h5. Now, this is a, the problem is this is a big weakness here. The only thing protecting this pawn is a rook. And technically, I have sort of inadvertent pressure to try and snare this pawn if he's not careful. So again, my, my advantage is, is developing slowly but surely. So first things first, let's develop pieces, and then we'll worry about capturing pawns. So I play bishop g2. He plays b6. Reasonable. He's got to get this bishop out. All right? So he'll start with that. I castle. He plays bishop b7, just getting on the diagonal, you know, letting things develop. Uh, I thought a long time here, and I play the move rook e1. Um, is it the best move? Uh, I just want to overprotect this this pawn here. That's all. Just put a lot of pressure, so I can sort of free up some pieces to move later on, and I'm just going through my development. All right, then he plays a really strange move here. He plays knight b4. Um, I think his idea is to go to d5, right, and exert more pressure. Uh, from that post. Not a terrible idea. So, as I said, I'm better here. His king is in the middle of the board. He hasn't decided where to castle. If he castles short, uh, his pawn hangs here. It's, he's got a lot of issues here. If he castles long, uh, that looks like a reasonable idea. But then, you know, I have possible moves like H, A, A5 and, and maybe C3 and opening things up on the queen side. So it's not safe for him no matter where he goes. So in my arrogance, and I write about this in my blog, I play bishop d2, just you know, hitting the knight. The problem, of course, is that c2 is hanging, and I'm really lost after this. I mean, I'm not. It's not. I'm not getting mated, but um, and again, I wrote about this in the blog. But the, the reality is, when you have a good position, look at what your opponent can do. He played knight b4 to go to d5. That's true, but c2 is a threat also. So all I really had to do here is just play something like c3, kick him. He'll go to d, he'll go back to c6, or he can go to d5, and then you know, we, the game continues as before, and there's no no problem. So I play bishop d2 inexplicably, and by the grace of good luck, he plays knight d5. He doesn't even see it because he wanted to go there all along, and he's just continuing his plan. So I got lucky. So now I play c3. I want to break up this pawn structure and uh, await further events. He takes, I take, and now he plays rook d8. Another odd move. I think he's, you know, he's inadvertently kind of wanting to put pressure on this d3 square, you know, this d3 wiki, which is reasonable, but now he can't castle. I know he's going to castle on the king side now. It's either that or he's going to leave his king in the middle, which would make no sense because look at this rook. I mean, it's a real mess, right? So, I play a really odd move here. Now, uh, I play knight b2. Now, let me tell you why I play that. I, I just want to be able to defend this pawn a couple of ways. Defend this guy, defend this guy, and free up my rook so I can bring my rook over at some point. That's the reason for it. That's not a good reason, though. Okay? What I should have done, I want you to pause the video and look to see what you think I should have done here. Now, the answer is, and I'm not going to go into a long list of variations, because as I've said in my uh, about section of my blog, I, I want to create short, concise explanations and not you know 10 different variations for every game. The right move here is knight to g5. Now, why is that a good move? Well, I know computer analysis is always easy to look at and say, you should have played this move, you should have played that move. This, this, is, this is what Stockfish recommends, but this is why I think it's a good move that humans should be able to see. This is not some ridiculous move that no one would ever see in a million years. Here's why it's a good move. It creates two powerful threats. The first, queen f3. Idea hitting on this f7 pawn. It, it, it almost forces him to castle. He can't push the pawn because then e, e6 is hanging. All right? So that's the first threat. The other threat is the very obvious but <laughs> passive looking move but it's very dangerous is bishop f3 right hitting this pawn has he defended he can't so moves like that to be you know as precise as possible are very very important and i missed that so knight b2 not stellar not losing but not not the best idea okay so he says uh, he's just going to castle consequences be damned and now 
I make a mistake. I play knight g5. Too late, though. It's only a move too late. But now I'm not realizing that if he takes with his bishop, a very obvious move, right? If I recapture with my bishop, the c3 pawn hangs. If I capture with the pawn, then he has maybe h4, and he has an attack, and I'm, I'm a little worse. So like that, the position changes, and I'm, and I'm a little worse. Okay, so knight g5. Mistake. He captures it, right? And then I capture back with the bishop. And now, again, I'm worse if he takes. Maybe I have a little, little advantage, but, I mean, not anymore. Not if he takes the c-pawn, right? I'm just down a pawn. And then this pawn next to it is really weak. It becomes a real problem. But he doesn't. He's worried about this diagonal here, right? This threat on the rook. So he plays knight d back to e7. Okay, so lucky for me. And then I just exchange. I have a good position here. I take the bishop. He recaptures. And now, what, what do I do? Well, obviously, look at this. Free pawn. So I grabbed it. And then he plays queen d5. A, a good centralizing move. Um, I think a better move actually would have been something like rook d5. Because now you're threatening to capture this pawn. Right? because two pieces are on it. And you might bring the other rook. I mean, it's 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 a little stronger. So anyway, he plays queen d5. And the other problem is this rook is still really buried. It has no future. So anyway, I play back to e2, just bringing my pieces back, consolidating. I'm up a solid pawn. This guy has life to be pushed in the future. At some point, maybe even f4, f5, not now, but at the right time might be an option, and we'll see. Okay, so now he plays rook d7. Uh, idea is he wants to get his f8 rook over to the file and triple up. The problem, though, with tripling up here is, again, the queen is leading. So the queen can take, but then the knight captures. So it's not it's not something he can really initiate too easily. It's a little awkward, to say the least. Okay. So now I'm like, okay, I got I to gotta keep the initiative. I wanted to play a move like rook 81 you know, get on the file. But eh, I thought that might be a little slow. It doesn't really do very much. So I play a good move here. I play h5. Let's just kick this guy this night. Right. Now, he, he has a move here, which again, it's a computer move. It's very hard to find. And that is to, he could take, to queen takes e5. <laughs> right, takes, 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 and at the end, f6. Cute. I'm still better, but it's I, I take on e6, obviously, and he takes, and I, these pawns are ugly, but it's it's an interesting answer to, to the problem. He doesn't do that, though. Instead, he plays the awkward knight h8. I mean, this knight is an awful situation. And then I said, okay, well, I'll push h6. Let's open this thing up as much as possible. He plays knight f5. The idea is he can capture now. Or if I capture back, he can take with the knight, and you know he wants to kind of get his pieces active as much as possible. So I thought about this for a long time, maybe about 45 seconds, and I'm thinking, okay, do I have h7 check? No, or queen h5. Those look like real silly moves that he's not going to fall for. So I just said, you know, I'm just going to take this. Let's just open up the g file. It can't be bad, right? Knight takes. Sorry, uh, h t uh, takes g7. He takes back with the knight, and now I figured, okay, I'm going to lock in here. Bishop f6, securing the e5 pawn once and for all, putting a lot of pressure on pieces. And he unwinds. So he goes with knight g6, trying to get back in the game, which is very fair. And now I'm thinking, you know, where should I put my, my pieces here? And I'm thinking, you know, if I could move my queen from here to here, I could threaten mate on h6. I'm sorry, uh, from h6 to g7, queen g7 mate. And that looks like a good idea. So, queen e3 to begin that plan. He sees it, and he plays king h7, which is a very vulnerable-looking move. You know, putting a king on the h-file like that, it's it's very suspect. And then I find uh, a way to continue. Like, where do I start? And I find a very strong move here, which is f3. Now, the reason why this is strong is I want to play king f2. Right, get the king up and then swing over my rook, right, and start attacking the h file. That's the idea. 
So he plays, he sees this. He plays rook h8, anticipating that. And I start my move here. I do king f2. And then he starts with king g8, getting out of the way. But he doesn't realize that I want to own this h file. I'm not interested in necessarily mating him there, although I would love to, but it's really just about square control, controlling the file. But first I do, uh, I play rook h1 to begin that process. He plays knight f5. You know, aggressive move, hitting my queen, and I just take first with check. He plays knight check. Now I play, again, another aggressive move here, queen g5, I'm closing in. Pressure, he's got to play knight g6, which is fair. And then, here we go. Now look at this h file. It's all mine, and there's problems here. So then after some thinking, he plays king f8, which isn't going to really help him uh, too much because, again, I have the dark squares covered, right? And where is he really going to escape to? It's, it's very, very difficult. So I thought about a minute here. This is the longest think of the game. And even though I'm confident I'm winning, I wanted to be absolutely certain. Where are my threats here? What are the biggest concerns I have in the position that I have to worry about? And the answer is really, I want to be on this square. These squares are really important to me. I want to be able to either check or come in here and mate this guy. So what piece is in the way? And the answer is the f5 knight. So my move, g4. Winning. And I have to calculate this. Now I calculated, you know, what does he have? Does he have any counterplay here? And I calculated what he actually plays. He plays queen b3. But I realized, okay, even if he takes this, what's he going to do? He has a rook and a queen. I'm going to take this knight in a moment. What can he do? And I realized that he doesn't have anything. There's nothing he can really do. So I said, okay, I'm taking. He takes with check. I play king g3. He takes, rook takes d3. Reasonable. And even, you know, in the possibility of him sacking, it doesn't do anything. Again, I just take back with the king, and I can if he and if he does anything like, uh, uh, you know, queen takes c3. I just move my queen to block. Sorry for all the arrows, but it's really nothing he can do. So now I'm going to win a piece. Fg6. He moves his king, which really doesn't do very much. Even right now, I can play rook h8, and if he moves up, I can just go here, winning the rook. I mean, it's pretty pretty. Sorry, situation. But instead, I just took gxf7, check. If he captures, I'm mating him. If he moves, I queen, and he resigned. So, good game overall. Rapid chess, highly recommended. I mean, the takeaways you'll read about my blog is, you know, don't be arrogant and, and don't underestimate your opponent. He is always dangerous, or she is always dangerous. So make sure you plan carefully. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.